where were you and what was happening when you found out that you'd actually won the GGLA for poetry? They announced it first thing in the morning and uh, I was at home with my kids trying to get everybody ready and running around doing the, uh, you know, the daily grind um, when the news came out. Um, it was pretty exciting. <laughs> it, it was weird. I didn't have a lot of time to be on social media that day because I had to go straight to work after all that. Uh, my life is not glamorous at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I haven't changed my life at all. It's just that now I have to do more interviews and, and stuff, but life has just simply gone on. <laughs> still working on my manuscripts, still trying to write poems, still trying to you know, keep up with life. I think what it means for us is a greater recognition on the literary stage. Um, I think that it will bring um, more authors to us, more authors will consider um, submitting to us, more authors will be able to solicit um, authors that we, we want in particular. Um, obviously, you know, it, it meant, um, you know, so some award money, it, it meant an influx of revenue for us. I mean, we're, we've sold, oh my goodness, Tolu sold out and we had to reprint. I don't know if you knew that Tolu. Uh, so we're waiting on your second, uh, print run to come in right now. Um, for Sadiqa as well, it meant that we can't keep her in the store. Um, she's selling out just as fast as we print her. And I think that from now on, you know, um, when our, our books come across the desk of reviewers, um, come across the desks of booksellers, they're going to take a closer look, a better look at our work. When you began writing poetry as a teenager, did you have any expectation that all of this would be happening, that writing would be so much a part of your life in adulthood? I just wanted some people to think I could write cool poems. <laughs> uh, and then at some point it became uh, an outlet for me, uh, you know, to process my, my thoughts, uh, you know, being a teenager at the time, uh, and then, you know, going into a very um, intense period of study in which, you know, we did things like dissections, we saw people, you know, ill and dying and so on and so forth. I, I, I needed to process a lot of my current life. I needed to process a lot of my past life, including past trauma. And poetry just, I, I, I found that every piece I wrote brought me some peace. Um, and, um, you know, that is, <clears throat> that is what spurred me on, not necessarily any um, expectation of uh, broad leadership, uh, readership or critical acclaim or anything. So it's, uh, it's been a very solitary, um, vocation. We are in the midst of a global health crisis, of course. Has the pandemic had any impact on your writing routine or your writing practice, or has it helped or hindered? Well, uh, it, it's very hard to concentrate these days, and one needs a measure of concentration to write. Um, and then when one writes, you're trying not to write about the pandemic and how awful everything is. And so you're like, what else is there to write about? <laughs> um, also, I, I mean, I'm grateful to be able to work from home, but um, I've lost my commute and my commute, my reading and sometimes writing time. So I would, uh, I would read and scribble notes uh, in my notes app. Um, I don't have that anymore. So now I can only write at like 4 a.m. when the kids don't wake up at 6 a.m or at like 11 p.m. when I'm already asleep, even though my eyes are open. Tolu, uh, how does your experience in the medical profession influence the way you write poetry? In the lyric poem in which, you know, you dwell a lot on the eye and, you know, inadvertently you would, you would go into some of the anatomy and some of the physiology and you know, pathology of, of, of the human. And, uh, some of that rich metaphorical language just comes out. I'm not trying to be a medical poet. Um, I'm not really interested in that, but it's, I can only write out of the resources that I have. And that's one of them. Mm -hmm.